Okay, uh, we're going to talk a little bit today about a concept known as taxi cab distance. And before we talk about taxi cab distance, in order for you to understand how it's different from the other distances that you've discussed in your math class, I need to briefly review those two other distance concepts. So the first one I'm going to review is called um, crow's fly distance. And the other one we'll talk about is called driving distance. And then today we'll learn this third one, which is called the taxi cab distance, okay? So we'll talk about crow's fly distance first. I want you to imagine we have a grid like this with X and Y. And I want you to imagine that this location over here, which I will call X1 and Y1, represents some location on the grid. And then there's another point over here somewhere, which is we'll call X2, Y2. And we want to know how far it is from one to the other. Now, this is called the crow's fly distance because if I release a crow from here, imagine this is the map of some territory, right? The crow will fly. If it's trained to fly to the other place, it will go like this, look. Like that, see? It just goes whoop, like that. And I would like you to turn to your partner now and describe what is the mathematical formula that we use to calculate crow's fly distance. And I would like you to write that down on your paper. <laughs> Ms. Banerjee, can you tell me the mathematical formula to calculate crow's fly distance in math class? Okay, distance formula. We'll say D equals, go ahead, Miss. You can also flip the X's and Y's, it won't matter. But that is the formula that we use. So what we typically are doing here is we're turning this into a Pythagorean problem where we're calculating the distance here and the distance here, and then using A squared plus B squared equals C squared to calculate this distance here. Okay, that is the formula that we use for closed fly distance. And this is also Euclidean geometry. It's Euclidean geometry. Let's now talk about driving distance. Typically, if this was a location on the map and this was a location on the map and we were going from here to here, and imagine it's far, like several hundred miles, this would typically not be the distance that we cover. And I'd like you to turn to your partner now and describe why is that. Miss Caitlin, can you tell me why, if you were going to drive from point A to B, it would probably not be this crow's fly distance? What do you have to do instead? Take breaks and stops? No, that's not the issue. Okay, you gotta stick to what are called roads, right? You gotta stick to roads. So there may be like a highway over here, then you may have to go through some city with some traffic lights, whatever, and then you may have to like uh, take another highway that goes like that, something like that. And so typically, your driving distance will be larger than your crow's fly distance. It could be the same if it, there is a highway that goes directly, but most of the time, the driving distance is gonna be a lot larger. You got that, right? Okay, we're gonna talk about a new concept today. And I want you to picture the streets of Manhattan. So imagine there's a building over here. Imagine there's another building over here, and then there are these streets and avenues that basically go between the two like that, right? Now, in the actual Manhattan, the distance from one avenue to another is much longer than the distance from one street to another. And that's because Manhattan blocks are more rectangular-ish than square-ish. But we're gonna ignore that today. And we're gonna say that the distance from one avenue to another and versus the distance from one street to another is the same. So we're gonna imagine the Manhattan geography as squares. Each block is a square, okay? Now, let's say we want to go from this block over here to that block over there. I think you'll agree with me that we could, for example, go this way, right? We could also go this way, and we could also go like this, something like that, right? So when we're calculating what's known as a taxi cab distance, we're saying we're going to hire a taxi from here and we want to go over there, and our answer is going to be measured by how many blocks we have to cover. So here you can see we have to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we would say that these two uh, 
points are seven taxi cab units away from one another. See that, right? Now, I need you to understand that the answers here are gonna be different than the answers for uh, crow's fly. Crow's fly will have a continuous set of real numbers as answers for distance. How would you characterize in computer science terms the range of solutions for a taxi cab problem? Would they be decimal numbers? What would they be? Please discuss. Mr. Kothari, what did you do for this summer, sir? Did you go anywhere? Sir, what do you think? Well, like, wouldn't it be an integer? Okay, so the answers here are going to be integers, right? And you can see here, I think, that it's pretty obvious how to calculate it. Now, going back to our picture of the other situation where we have Euclidean geometry, I want you to imagine we're going to talk about distances now. Imagine we have a point over here. To make it easier, I'll start off with it being in the origin. And if I was to ask you to draw for me all the points that are some fixed distance, let's say three miles away from the blue point, what would the what would the geography look like of all the points that are like three miles away from the blue point? Please discuss. Circle. Radius. Okay, so it's a circle of radius three. You agree with that, right? So let me just draw that for you right here like that. So that's the circle of radius three. We say that this is the locus of points. You've heard that term before, right? The locus of points three miles away. Now, I have a more interesting question for you. Let's take the same problem using this taxi cab distance thing, right? So we're over here and it's like more of a grid system than it is like, uh, like continuous. And imagine we have a, some kind of uh, uh, location right here. We'll call this the origin, right, origin. And I'd like you to try and draw something like this on your paper now. And I want you to tell me, if I was to tell you to mark all the locus of points that are some fixed taxi cab distance away from the red square, let's say three taxi cab units, what would that locus look like? Would it be a circle again? Please try and work on that with your partner, draw the figure, and I'll meet you back here in one minute. We want to draw the locus of points that are three taxi cab units away from the red square. And what we want to know is, does that represent a circle? If it's not a circle, what is it? Okay. Mr. Mason, the thing that you've drawn, sir, three taxi cab units away from the red square, is it a circle? No. No. Sir, what shape is it? It's a diamond, that's correct. So what you've drawn here is a diamond. So it's important to understand that a taxi cab distance, the, 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 the non-Euclidean version of this distance now, it's, the, the locus is not a circle anymore. It, it's, it's basically a diamond that, that basically, you know, like, like that, right? It's like that. Got that, right? Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna just keep going with our understanding of this. Oh, look at that. Okay, so now uh, let's say I have this, uh, let's say I have this square here like that, right? And we'll say that it's located at zero, zero, just for convenience, we'll say it's at the origin. And I ask you to write down for me all the square coordinates that are, let's say, four taxi cab units away from zero, zero, okay? So now I need you to calculate two things for me. What are the coordinates of every point that is four taxi cab units away from zero, zero, and how many are there total? That's what I wanna know. I wanna know what are the points, how many are there? So I'll get you started. Here's one right now. Four taxi cab units, this one right here. One, two, three, four. This one is at four, zero. So that's one of the answers. That, that's one of the answers. Four, zero is an answer. Here's another one. Three, one, three, one. See, these are both four taxi cab units away from the red square, you see that, right? I want you to draw the picture, figure out how many answers there are, write all the answers down, and underneath that, just tell me how many points you've got total in your answer set. We're assuming the center now is at the origin, so this is at zero, zero. I want four taxi cab units away, four units. In about 10, 15 more minutes, we're gonna go next door, 
When we get there, you have a choice. You can use your own computer or you can use the school desktop to get on IntelliJ. And we're gonna do two projects on IntelliJ. The first project is just a Hello World project where I'm gonna ask you to write Hello World and show it to me on IntelliJ. And then the second thing we're gonna do is what I'm gonna show you here. I would like the TAs now to go around and check the answers and see if people are getting the right concept here. How many answers are there? Can we all agree that there are 16 solutions? Yeah. Now I need you to write them all down. When you write solutions, you should try to number them. Okay. Are we all good? Okay, a couple more minutes. I'm gonna make the problem harder in a minute. Try to do it methodically so you don't leave any behind. Don't just like randomly try to write down the answers. Try to be methodical. Okay, even if you're not finished, I need you to stop working and look up here. I'm gonna give you a slightly harder problem to do now. The last problem we did, we assumed that the center of our taxi cab problem was at zero, zero. Now I'm gonna expand the problem and say that the center can be anywhere. For example, let's do the problem assuming that the center, right, of the locus, right, the center is gonna be at minus four, three, which is this point I've drawn over here. And what I want you to do this time again is I want you to once again calculate all the locus of points. This time we'll make it easier to say three taxi cab units, right, away from this point right here. So once again, I wanna know how many solutions will there be and what are they, okay? This time the center is not at zero, zero now. It's at some arbitrary point. I'll, I just use minus four, three here, but it could be anywhere. I wanna know what are all the solutions that are three taxi cab units away from this point. So how many answers are there? 12. 12, we all agree, right? There's 12. Okay, I hope you can see where we're going with this. What we want to do when we go next door is we wanna write a method where if we give it the center and how many taxi cab units are away, we want it to be able to generate the solutions by writing them. And we wanna write them just like this, like, like X comma Y like that. We want to generate each point like this, print them out, and also generate how many answers there are and maybe write that underneath or something like that. Okay, so let's get together, you and me, and decide what is the method header going to look like. So this is where hopefully you'll start to remember what the Java looks like. So we're going to create a class that's not important here. Now, I'm going to ask you just to call your class capital main. That may seem uh, a little bit confusing because our method is also called main, but that's what people do. So we're going to call our class capital main. Inside here, we'll have our public static void main method here, like this. And all this is going to do is it's going to call the method that we're going to write uh, in a few minutes here. And we first need to decide what should we call the method that's going to generate these taxi cab distances. Taxi cab distance generator. Okay, I like it. Taxi cab distance generator. It's too long, so we'll shorten it up a little bit. We'll go generator. TC generator, TC gen, TC gen, right? And we need to have some keywords over here. And uh, I would like you to discuss with your partner what those keywords should be. And then we're going to need some uh, parameters over here and we gotta decide how many parameters, what data types should they be, that type of thing. Okay. Mr. Moises, sir, can you tell me the three keywords I should put in front of my method? Anyone should be able to call it. What else, sir? I know it's been a while. This thing's not going to return anything. It's just going to print all the answers and also how many answers there are. And the other one, sir, it's been a real long while. Yeah, it's going to be static because we're not going to be using any state variables for our, for our problem here today. So we'll just make it public static void. Now, the next thing I need to know is how many parameters should there be and what data type should there be and what would be good names for them? Mr. Gabriel, can you tell us, sir, how many parameters do you think there should be? Uh, what should they be? X, Y, D, D for distance. Okay, so there's gonna be an X coordinate and a Y coordinate, and those are going to be basically where the center of our, uh, of our data, uh, of our focus, foc uh, loci are gonna be. And 
what data types should they be? Ms. Bridget? Okay, so there's going to be integer here, integer here, and integer D there like that. Okay, so you're going to, they're going to give you an XY. In fact, let's call it the X, C, Y, C. So we'll know that that refers to the center coordinates, X, C, and Y, C, we'll call it. And D will be the taxi cab distance. In fact, let's call it T, C, D. Yeah, I like that. T, C, D, we'll call it So for this taxi cab distance. So someone will call this method from in here with a, what the center location is going to be and also what the taxi cab distance is going to be. And your, met, your method is going to generate all, the, all the, uh, the, the coordinates and also find, finish by writing down how many solutions there are. That's what we're going to do for today. Now, we're going to go next door. I mentioned to you, you have to do two projects for me. The first one is the whole world. So you need to just go there. Go on IntelliJ, create a brand new project called Hello Project, type in Hello World, uh, system out print, run it, show it to one of the TAs, I'll put your grade in, and then you work on this harder project. Remember, remember, everyone except for the four students, now three students, is working alone on this code. Okay, only the students that I designated are working with partners. If you need help, the entire bank of TAs is available to help you. Let's go next door and press the buttons.